Since Star Wars covers so much different media, and some ships show up in a variety of comic books, movies, TV shows, video games, and everything in between, it's understandable and kind of inevitable that sometimes different things will portray the same ship in different ways. Sometimes this doesn't really affect the broader universe and it's simply chalked up to a production mistake or a design choice to serve a particular storytelling purpose, but sometimes this is how we get more new official ship classes in places where they were probably not intended to be all that different. Some of these instances go back as far as the original trilogy. There are some instances, like the Tector class, where from concept to production model, the difference seems to be consistent and intentional, the Tector being a Star Destroyer shown in the Battle of Endor, which lacked a reactor bulb and ventral hangers that other Star Destroyers we'd seen so far all had. So that's one example where it seems to be specifically intended to have been some kind of official variant. On the other hand, we have ships like the Pride of Tarlandia which was a ship named in the Return of the Jedi novel as a communication ship and eventually indicated by the Essential Guide to Warfare as being much larger than other ISDs, prompting comparisons with models used in the movies, a discussion that had been going on for essentially decades, comparing a standalone model of a command bridge with some key differences from other previously seen Star Destroyer bridges, both in scale and in detail. Even though it was unlikely to have really been built with the intention of being different, it does show up as being somewhat bigger compared to the Millennium Falcon than, for example, the Avenger was. Even though literally all we ever see of it is the command bridge. This long tradition of upscaled standard ships and fan debates around them continued with the Clone Wars television series, which introduced the primary topic of today's video, the Providence and Recusant Dreadnoughts. First seen in the Clone Wars cartoon, these ships are upscaled versions of the traditional recusant like destroyer and Providence carrier slash destroyer. When they made their debuts, there were scaling clues for each of these ships which made their standard lengths of 1187 meters for the recusant and 1088 meters for the regular Providence not really work. On the recusant side, we see some clear shots of Grievous's recusant scraping alongside a Venator and clearly being much longer than it, when typically these ships should be of pretty similar length. Then on the other hand, we have Admiral Trench's Providence, the Invincible, get similar sizing cues. These naturally sparked a giant and mostly pointless fan debate about whether these were new classes or simply production mistakes, spurred on by the fact that there weren't actually any model details indicating the different scales besides the size itself. With massive ship size differences like that, you'd typically expect things like viewports, weapons, and so on, which are typically what you'd use to kind of suss out a ship's size in isolation. Even stuff like hangar and marking sizes can be used for that. But with these assets largely being just reused, there wasn't a huge amount to go off of. Personally, I typically side with just thinking of these as production or design choices or mistakes, rather than immediately going to new classes, but as time has gone on both in Legends and Canon sources, We've had more official confirmation of and references to these larger variants as being real things. The upscaled Providence Dreadnought has a page on the Star Wars website, which has been since removed, but it's still accessible through archive.org, where the ship is given a length of 2177 meters. And the Essential Guide to Warfare references the Invincible, Trench's flagship, as being the first in a line of upscaled Providences. The Recusant, similarly, has a 2544 meter variant confirmed as being an official length in the Clone Wars Incredible Vehicles guidebook. So all of this seems like pretty firm confirmation that even if they initially began as just production mistakes or specific design choices for a specific scene, they've been officially set up as their own ships. As far as the Incredible Vehicles book goes, it also says on the page that this makes the Recusant with that size the largest ship in the Separatist Navy, but it's on the same page as the Lucre Hulk, which is like 800 meters longer and bigger in every other dimension as well, so take that however you want. Honestly, while I didn't like it as much at first, the idea of these upscaled variants has grown on me over time. I don't think they'd have been especially common, but they're indicative of the move the galaxy started making towards some larger ships again under the Empire and during the Clone Wars. With all of these newly unleashed shipbuilding companies, not having to worry about the Rusan Reformation which limited the size and power of ships, turning these essentially vanity projects into ways to advertise their value to either side, the Republic or the CIS, even if they're not always especially practical. 
We include them in the Empire at War mod I run, Fall of the Republic, where we did give the upscaled Providence at least some design differences to help make the scale a bit more practical, so that's generally my main complaint with what we see on screen at this point, though it of course is going to be expensive if you're trying to make a new asset for a show like that, especially when these were happening pretty early in the show's run. So it's understandable, but I still think that would have been a better way to go if they were intentionally going to set these up as different ships, which I don't think was the original intent. Either way, that's just my opinion though, let me know in the comments whether you think the upscaled ones work or don't, or if they were even intentional or not. If you have any other topics you'd like to see me cover on the channel, please leave them in the comments or on the Discord in the Suggestions channel. This particular video topic comes from a Discord request. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.